that you might prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philip's translation said, do not let the world press you into its mold. And just about everything that we embrace and love and live for and would be willing to die for flies in the face of the culture. And we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. These young men are outstanding to me. Someday I want to shake their hands. Someday I want to embrace them. Because when I was a teenager, when I was a young person, many times they inspired me. Many times they challenged me. Amen. Many times they helped me. They stood for the Lord. But here's why I am most impressed by Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, okay, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. We don't have to discuss it. We don't have to get together and wring our hands and wonder what we're going to do today. Are we going to bow or not going to bow? We don't have to deliberate about this. We made the decision a long time ago. We made that decision a long time ago. It's already been made. There's no decision to be made today. We're not careful to answer you in this matter. The next thing that they said that I pointed out to you is very important to me. They said, if. Everybody said, if. And that is a big if. If it be so. In other words, it may happen, it may not happen. If God chooses to deliver us, He can deliver us. There is no furnace too hot for God to wet His fingers on His tongue and just like a little candle, put out the fire of the furnace. Whether it's heated one time, two times, three times, five times, seven times hotter than it's ever been before. God, psst, he can silence the fire if he wants to. We serve a God that can put out the fire. We serve a God that can douse the flames of torment. We serve a God that can deliver us. We know our God can do this. How did they know their God could do this? Because they serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They serve the God of Moses and David. They serve the God of their fathers. Hallelujah. And like Brother Stone King says, whatever God did for them, God can do for them. Amen. If God opened the Red Sea for Moses, uh, he can certainly put out the fires of the fiery furnace our God can do it and I want to stop right here and tell somebody God is still able the God that I serve is able the Bible said Paul said in Ephesians 3 20 he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That means let your imagination run wild. God is able to do that and he's able to exceed it. Exceeding abundantly is an interesting phrase. These two words put together means that God is never has a hard act to follow after himself. Whatever he's done before, he doesn't have to worry about outdoing that. He can always take it further. He can always make it greater. He can always do it better. He can always exceed whatever he has done in the past. No matter the great miracle that he's done for you yesterday, he's able to do a greater miracle today. No matter the power of his deliverance uh, 10 years ago, he's able to do something greater today. He has exceeding greatness. It's enough for me to know that my God is able even when He does not always do it. I know that you're listening today. We're not shouting right now and we may not all morning. I don't know. But I want to equip you with a concept of the Word of God today
if you can get this down in the heart of your soul amen if you can get it in the soul of your heart if you can get this embedded into your spirit others may come and go others may bow or not bow but you will never lose your integrity with God if you will understand these three words but if not it's enough for me to know that God is able it's enough for me to know that God can answer my prayers it's enough for me to know that God can heal my disease it's enough for me to know that God can promote me in his time but if he does not what I want to know is what could possibly happen what news could possibly rock your world? What circumstance could possibly arise in your life when you say, that's it. I'm not going any further. Right here is where the train stops. You say, well, pastor, that would never happen. Listen, friends, don't literally do it, but just look around. Look around. Singapore and Asia is no different than America. In our church in Kansas City, if we had every person that had ever committed their life to Jesus Christ still serving the Lord today, we could not build a building big enough to keep them in the house of God. Many have turned, like John 6, 66. You know that was Fish and Chips Sunday? John chapter 6, fish and chips Sunday. Yeah, Jesus fed the 5,000. Are you with me? With loaves and fishes. Oh, I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. They all heard about it. Come on, we got fish and chips Sunday. Woo! Free food. If you want people to come, give food away. So here they come. They come. There's 5,000 men plus their wives and daughters and sons. Some suggest that there may have been as many as 20,000 people that day. Jesus fed 20,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. And he passed it out. And then after he, they got done eating and their bellies were full and they gave the polite belches. Burp, and uh, were satisfied. And there were 12 baskets left over and they picked all of that up then jesus began to do what he really had them there for they came for the food but he really brought them there to hear what he was going to say he said except ye eat of my flesh and drink of my blood you have no life in you and no part of me and they looked at each other the bible said they were offended come on Turn to somebody and say, they were offended. Jesus said, does this offend you? Of course it offended them. They didn't come to hear a message like that. They came for the fish and the chips. Where's the dessert? Where's the mango pudding? Fish and chips. Oh, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear this? And the Bible said in John 6, 66, from that time, Many of them that followed him turned and walked with him no more. You see, some people serve God for what's in it for them. Some people live for the Lord when everything's going their way. Some people commit their lives to God when everybody's getting healed and everybody's being blessed and they're being promoted and everything's going their way and they got fish and chips in their mouth and in their esophagus and in their gut and they're feeling good about things. But just let Jesus say something like, except ye eat of my flesh. He was not talking about cannibalism. He was talking about carrying his cross. He was talking about being willing to lay down their lives and deny themselves of many of the pleasures of life. And they turned, they turned to one another and said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? And the Bible said they got up and they left. Why did they leave? They left because they were consumers. They were not committed. They were not the church. 
They were not the congregation. They were consumers. They were there for what's in it for me. Are you listening to me today? They were there for nothing but selfish reasons. Heal me, bless me, feed me, but don't mess with me.